tell you what, it's a hard life reviewing all these games. Welcome back to Switch Up everyone. Thanks so much for watching these videos, we really appreciate it. So let's get into the Mugsters review. Now the eShop is rammer jammed with games now. With Nintendo hoping to up this even more to around 20 or 30 games a week. I read a really nice article on Switch Watch. Go check out their website if you haven't done so. And it was just telling me that there are way too many games coming. Now some games in the coming now section just catch your eye. Mugsters is one such title. Combine that with the big name, Team 17, and I was excited to get my hands on this one. But what on earth is it? Let's find out. The story is thin on the ground. That's an understatement right there, it's practically non-existent. Apparently, aliens have taken over the planet and enslaved humanity. You and you alone must travel from island to island saving your fellow humans. Story's not delivered through any real cutscenes or meaningful dialogue, it's about as paper thin as it comes. In fact, the story makes paper look fat. As you'll see, this for me was distinctly a lacking element to the game. This takes the Minecraft approach to story, i.e. you almost create your own. I do enjoy the alien invasion theme, although super cliche and overused, it gives the game a nice retro charm. The aliens looked really quite nifty in their little UFOs as well, I like that. Story gets 13 out of 20. So here's where things get a little more interesting and equally slightly more confusing. Mugsters drops you on a hub island with little to no instruction. There you are running around trying to get to grips with your environment. You notice you can punch with one button, run with another and jump. If you go into the little cabin you can change your outfit. Squinting at the screen something else becomes painfully apparent. Your character is overly small. Now granted my vision would give a mole a run for its money but still this camera is far away. That's fine thinks I, I'm just gonna zoom in a touch. Nope, no you won't. This is a fixed distance camera. You can use the right stick to rotate it though and you do get used to the distance eventually. It was obviously an aesthetic choice, albeit one I found a tad confusing at the beginning. When you finally find the island teleporters, the game proper begins. Each island has a series of challenges to complete. The worlds have some real destructivity and you can enter any vehicle with the press of a button. Controls feel solid and the character responsive. The early missions are simple to a fault and you'll find yourself saying, what, is that it? At any point you can leave your island by entering a plane, which by the way are a nightmare to fly, and launch off the screen. However, this will not fully complete the level and rescuing the humans and destroying something are usually the order of the day. Now you can complete levels in any way you choose. This is where much of the fun is intended. There are times when enemies will charge you and they can be killed with vehicles or by punching them GTA 1 style. You have a regenerative life bar and can pick up and throw barrels that explode and other items you find in the world. This is important as some things must be destroyed and if you do not have a vehicle to hand, an explosive barrel is definitely the option. As mentioned, there are vehicles, over 30 in fact, and you'll need these to break down the physics based walls and doors throughout the islands. Too much damage though, and you better run away fast. Co-op multiplayer is where I think the game is really going to be good fun. You can play through the whole experience with a friend, and the chaotic nature of the game lends itself perfectly to this. I can just see it now as you're trying to be super tactical by placing an explosive crate and your friend comes screaming through the wall in a clapped out larder and ruins your plans. My initial impressions of the game was that it was just not fun. After moving into some of the more tricky levels I can confirm that my initial impression was wrong, thankfully. The challenge really ramps up and if you focus on getting the collectibles before moving on to the next island I found it much more rewarding. The game also really the game is also really crap at telling you what to do, to a fault. When you enter the plane thinking it's just there to let you have a lovely little joyride, when in actual fact that's the stage exit, you can get a bit confused early on about what's going on and what it's all about. With a friend the experience is much more fun and working through the puzzles with someone else is great, messy and incredibly enjoyable. The early game really doesn't do the game any favours. As you progress, 
it becomes much more enjoyable. There's a real element of strategy and planning that goes into each level. Things like not saving the hostages until the end because they run after you and die most times is just a slight hint as to what you can expect in later game. As you progress and you're fighting UFOs and alien ships and laser beams, the whole experience just becomes incredibly fun. And I was so glad to actually get to those stages. I almost gave up early on. The game is undoubtedly flawed, but with perseverance, a great shed ton of fun can be had. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20. I really like the graphical style, it's Breath of the Wild meets Commandos 2 and runs well enough in docked and handheld modes. Although there are moments that that dips below 30 frames a second, it's generally okay and the game doesn't require any twitch reactions. A unique style and one that works here. Of note are the little flourishes of detail such as water rippling when you fly over them and the smoke from your exhaust as you screech your way in your rubbish little car. It's almost cartoonish in presentation. For a game all about freedom and destruction, this works nicely. Not having an option to zoom in hurts my old man pride, and I wish there was one. Graphics score 16 out of 20. Minimal seems a fitting word. The game has no music, which was jarring and a little odd. I absolutely think this was a mistake. Even if the vehicles you entered had sound, again a la GTA, I think this would have been an improvement to the experience. As it is, the game really does have no music. There's a brief piece on the menu screen, but yeah, that's it. The sound effects are good enough, but for me this area is just a letdown in every way. Music scores 12 out of 20. The game retails at £9.99 or $14.99. This is the perfect price for this game. It sits right in that impulse range for many and I just have a feeling about this one. I can't put my finger on it but I had a similar one when I first played Minecraft. Sure it was a little janky and I was like why is this even fun but after a few thousand hours and a couple of billion dollars spent across the world people seem to agree with that sentiment. I could definitely be wrong about this one, but I just have a feeling like I say. There are tons and tons of levels on offer, hidden stages and lots to come back for. Value scores 17 out of 20. A really strange game to review. If I had to call it in the first half hour, I would have gone with maybe 50 or 60% final score, but having played much more in handheld it gets incredibly fun. That's all there is to it really, it grows on you, and then you just want one more island. It has its faults, the lack of music is rubbish, and the story is a touch flimsy. Heck, it's just a really good laugh, and a lot of fun when you reach those tougher sections. It scores a final switch up score of 74%. Go out and punch some aliens in the face for me. Switch up. See ya!